There's something in this glass of red wine that has taken off in the supplement space, and it joins the club of other anti-aging or longevity supplements that have become quite popular, because living longer is what everyone wants at the moment. And if you're wondering what exactly I'm talking about, this something is called resveratrol, and it is commonly found in red wine, but there isn't actually a huge amount in red wine, and you would need about 40 liters of wine to get the same amount of resveratrol that some of these supplements claim to have. So today I will be explaining to you what resveratrol is, how it works, and whether or not these supplements have any actual benefits to taking them. So let's go. Resveratrol actually belongs to a group of plant compounds called polyphenols. And polyphenols are very important for plants. They protect them against UV radiation, which comes from the sun. It protects them against bacteria and pests. And polyphenols also contribute to the color and taste of the plant itself. So plants tend to make resveratrol as a defense mechanism when they're under a bit of stress, which can come from injury infection, or like I said before, UV radiation. Now, polyphenols like resveratrol are thought to have benefits in humans too, and the main reason is because they tend to have antioxidant effects. So resveratrol, it acts mainly as an antioxidant, and I have mentioned how antioxidants work in past videos too, but in case you're new to the channel, antioxidants work by neutralizing free radicals. And to understand what that means, we do need to understand what free radicals are. Now these are unstable molecules that roam around in your body, and they are the result of very normal body processes like breathing, metabolism, which is simply the breaking down of nutrients, and making or using energy, and also things like exercise can create these free radicals as well. So they are a very normal thing, but like all things in our bodies, if there is too much, it can tend to cause some problems. And there are some environmental factors like pollution, smoking, radiation, even fried foods, and UV exposure that can create more of these free radicals inside your body. And if you have too many of them around, they start to interact with cells in your body because they are unstable, and this can cause some damage, which can lead to some issues. And it is also thought that these free radicals can cause faster aging, and so maybe from here you can see why maybe resveratrol has suddenly become quite popular. Now, free radicals have been linked to chronic health conditions like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and so you can see the picture here, they're just not great for your health. This is where antioxidants are useful. They stabilize the free radicals, which essentially means that the free radicals interact with the antioxidant instead of the cells in your body. And this prevents the free radicals from causing damage around all your cells. And when you prevent free radicals from causing damage, you protect DNA, proteins and other cells all over your body from damage, which may help prevent chronic disease. But this isn't the only way that resveratrol works. Some research has found that it may also have impacts on cellular pathways within the body. And this can get very complicated to explain, but all you need to know is that resveratrol has been shown to activate something called SIRT1. Now this is a protein that belongs to a family of proteins called sirtuins. And if that sounds familiar to you, it's because NAD supplements have also been linked to these sirtuins. But this SIRT1 in particular, it's needed for DNA repair, for metabolism and cell survival as well. And these proteins have been linked to longevity and may play a role in protecting against age-related diseases. Now that one is a big maybe still at this stage. We don't have too much proof. Um, I think that's more of a theory, but that's because it hasn't been able to be tested yet in randomized controlled trials or other studies, which we will likely start to see in the future. Now, resveratrol also can have anti-inflammatory effects, and it might increase the production of something called nitric oxide in your body now. Nitric oxide is very interesting. It helps to relax blood vessels and improve blood flow. So if it does do this, then resveratrol could be beneficial in terms of blood pressure and overall heart health. 
Now, these things I've mentioned, like the sirtuins and the nitric oxide, there is less evidence existing on resveratrol helping in these areas. So at this stage, I do think the main benefits come from antioxidant activity, and there may be a little bit of potential for these other things that I have mentioned already. But like a lot of these longevity type nutrients and supplements, research has only just started to ramp up and start getting out there. So it's likely we will see more as time goes on. So that's how it works. But what about all these supplements? Because there's a large difference between what a nutrient or a molecule could potentially do in your body and then you getting those same effects from taking a supplement. So I had a quick browse in terms of what supplements are currently around and they seem to have a range of doses. I've seen 150 milligram capsules, uh, 250 milligram, 500 milligram, and also 1000 milligram capsules. There are also heaps of brands that are available and that one concerns me a little bit because I haven't heard of a lot of these, so just be careful about these online only brands. I've said before in many videos, a lot of these supplements, they don't have to prove that there's actually 500 milligrams or whatever it is they claim to have inside their products. So choose wisely. So that's the range of doses available, but it is a good idea for you to know what dose is actually effective. And this is where it's a good idea to look at research, which I'm about to do for you. This is a meta-analysis looking into current research on resveratrol. It was published in 2024, which is great because that's very recent. Now, according to this, over the past 20 years, there have been about 200 studies that have looked into the use of resveratrol for a number of health conditions. But to this day, there is no agreed upon treatment regimens, which simply means that medical professionals, usually doctors, will use their best judgment to determine their dose. What we do know though, is that doses up to one gram a day seem to be well tolerated, meaning that most people will be able to take one gram a day of resveratrol without negative side effects. Now that doesn't mean that the supplement doesn't cause side effects, but beyond this one gram point, it is more likely to happen. And the most common one that you will experience first probably is um, stomach related side effects. Now, the tricky thing with resveratrol is that studies have been done with doses from as low as five milligrams to as high as five grams. And that is a pretty large range. The reason it's that big is because it's currently being used in many different conditions. And so each one is going to have different doses come out of it. Now, I won't go and comment too much on all the conditions that it's being used for. Research is a bit new here. And if you are someone with existing health conditions, it's a good idea to get advice from your doctor. They're going to be best able to determine if it's appropriate for you. They'll be able to look at evidence and determine a dose if needed. I'm not going to come on here and just give a blanket dose that people should be taking for certain medical conditions. Everyone's going to be a little bit different. So I think the large range of doses shown in research means that different people will have different doses that work best for them. Now, some studies have shown that 150 milligrams a day can provide benefits in terms of blood pressure reduction. And the anti-aging crowd seem to be saying that 500 milligrams a day is what people should be taking. Again, I can't actually say there's a whole lot of evidence to support the whole anti-aging thing, but considering that doses up to one gram a day are well tolerated, if you are a healthy individual, it may be worth a try. Now, if you do have existing health issues, please just double check that it's okay for you to use for your own situation before getting some. Now, the other issue with these resveratrol supplements is the fact that resveratrol doesn't have the best bioavailability. What this means is that when you take a dose, so say for example, one capsule with 500 milligrams, the entire 500 milligrams is not going to be able to be used by your body. This is the case with any medication or supplement. What's in the dose and what is used by the body are always different. Now with resveratrol, when you take it orally, so that's a capsule or a powder or a tablet, then it is actually well absorbed into your body. Studies seem to show about 75% of the dose will get absorbed, but it is very quickly metabolized in your intestines and by your liver, which means that very little of the actual resveratrol will enter your bloodstream for use in your body. So just be aware of that. How much of these supplements are of actual use to your body is still up for debate. You might not get a whole lot of that 500 milligrams or whatever dose you actually take. And if not enough is used by your body, 
then you will likely not experience any of the benefits. Now, research is currently being done to see how to improve this situation. You need to play around with how you deliver the dose. Sometimes they make special capsules. Other times they add things to the molecule itself. But the bottom line is this is a new space. Research is ongoing and the supplements out at the moment, they may not be the most effective because of the low bioavailability. And I'm hoping I can do a follow-up video at some point in the future with some more solid information in terms of effectiveness and dosing, and maybe some more clinical trials behind it. These products though, they're going to be available for purchase regardless of the evidence. That's just how the supplement space works. So it's up to you really to make sure that you have the information you need to make sure it's safe for you, to make sure they're effective and that you're not wasting your money. And then you need to make a decision for yourself. I personally, I have not tried it, so I can't really give any feedback to you on that. I don't feel I need something like resveratrol at the moment. That's just my situation. But if you've tried it, please let us know in the comments so we can hear what your experiences are. So there you have it. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of what resveratrol is and why it's becoming more and more popular as the interest in longevity just keeps growing. If you have any questions as usual, please comment below. I will see you in the next video. And until then, keep playing the long game.